Niggas rep, they from my hometown thugging, but since the last time I checked, they none of y'all did nothing. I'm from the X, but niggas see you parked out front, and then they poach you with the tool and make you cough up something that hit your neck. These auto tuning rats be humming, and then they start singing, sounding like eight boogie or something. Ain't no respect for niggas that can't switch up the flow. I got the sniper on the roof and yellow tag on your toe. Them rainbow heads be goofing, claiming king of the game. You in the wrong house, little boy, go get in your lane. You niggas dead. We in the booth just yelling this shit. Somebody tell this nigga fam they found him dead in this shit. Get in your bed, go put your spidey jammy gems on. This nigga Don in the kitchen eating Skittles and corn. A triple threat with them scar gang niggas is up. Hey, don't you think my nigga's sleeping? We just finishing up. That nigga Ed, designer think he jiggy and shit. That nigga can't complete a sentence, so we're spitting this shit. Y'all need to see these niggas for the filth like they pork. And I'ma teach you reasons why I'm the new king of New York. Ah, uh, you got your pretties done? Nah, my mom just did these shits real quick. I need to get my shit done. Once I got picking these done right quick. Come on, the steps, my nigga. Hey, Vern, look at me up. Team Fang Gang. I was trying to get you. Wave me to God. Don't fucking leave. I know how you was doing it. I know how you was doing it. I don't think it's no competition. Like, them guys kind of pretty much laid their foundation and shit. You can't even put ourselves in the same bracket as them. We just follow a tradition, you know what I'm saying? But it's a, it's a rich hip hop tradition here, especially being from downtown Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know Biggie Small from Plant Hills. So, you know, I always felt it was like a must that I carried the torch just, just on the shrimp for that. You know what I'm saying? On the flip side of that, my pops from Marcy Project. So I always had that DNA running through my veins too. So, you know, just my grandma and my grandpa's been in New York out their whole life, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just good to see you know, my family been downtown for over 60 years, and I just, you know, I'm living proof of it. Downtown and evolved to over time. You know, Biz Marky from up the block, Fort Green, on the original 50 Cent, Biggie Small, Notorious B.I.G., uh, who else? Spike Lee, April Walker, A.A. Rashid, myself, um, who else? I, I'm not thinking of. Taj Gibson, um, Tiffany Prince. We can keep going, like, like yeah. the Booker Smith, <laughs> the famous basketball player Booker Smith. Dickheads right there. Alright, so look, so growing up we had this music festival over here called the Atlantic Annie. Anybody from the 90s that was doing hip hop, y'all came to Atlantic Annie, y'all performed, you remember y'all, you know what I'm saying? Dos Effects, Onyx, anything of that era, you know what I'm saying? Fucking uh what's that? What's this my guy's Camp Low. Word, I was there to see Camp Low that day. Uh, word. So every block, like that's Atlantic right there, right? That's Hanson. Next block is Fulton. Lafayette, then DeKalb, you know what I'm saying? So every block had a stage, you know what I'm saying? So we going from block to block, you know what I'm saying? Me and all the dudes. So we know Junior Mafia performing on Atlantic. So we get there, it's Fat Joe and the old Terror so This is like 94, we don't know who Big Pun is. So Pun up there kicking this shit, man. We like, yo, boo, you're off the stage, put Fat Joe there, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the real fucked up shit? And they just go to show, you know? Look what Pun became, you know what I'm saying? He ain't take that, let it discourage him or nothing. I think he kept going. Came a rap legend. Man, for me, I'm really, like you said, I just make the canvas. It's like that, it's like I start the, you know, the production of making the canvas for the painter to go and actually go and splash on there. You know, it's, it, you know, and sometimes I'll paint the narrative mm -hmm. as well, because sometimes the beat will take that artist somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, every every record I choose, it would be something that would like um that would give a person a feeling, like um, like that summer feel or that winter feel or that glum feel, whatever it is, we gotta understand that music carry, um, carry free frequency, and everybody carry that within themselves. So if you if you work the emotions in, in, in the consumer, you know that you know even the artists they'll they'll bring the you know the optimum skill and penmanship. Me and Wavy murder shit. Best stop boy. Do your research, dog. My print permanent. I was on my shit when Big Worm was getting perms and shit. You wanted the bitches, they came to me. I curved the bitch. I was always intuitive to music, you know. I, it was more than just hip hop because every time somebody played something for me as a kid, I would just listen to the melodies, not the lyrics, but always the melodies, always the little instruments, the, you know, the little things that people wouldn't catch in the in the song. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it was just like, you know, 
I, I was all about the details. Then when my cousin started introducing me to hip hop, and then that's when I started paying attention to detail and production. Like, I feel like if I had started production a little bit earlier into my in my life, I probably would have been more polished as a producer, you know, like, but, you know, but I just took, I felt like I took the time, but I took the time, but I took the time to study music before I even go in and started applying my own creative input mm -hmm. to shit. Oh man, uh, I got a dope album coming soon, man. Probably within like the next two months, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna tell y'all to produce it yet, but it's gonna crack some necks, you know what I'm saying? Yo. So, that's it, man. I'm just sitting back cooking. That's really what I've been on. I kind of took like, you know, I went on a little high hiatus. I had some real life situations going on, going on, and um, I took a little break from the music for a second. But in the midst of that, you know, I was just, you know, writing and, you know, putting all my experiences on the uh, on the paper. So, you know, expect that soon. I'm super appreciative, man. I'm just happy, man. It, um, it's been a long time coming, man. Mm. I was I was somebody out here that was, you know, selling CDs. First of all, I was giving out CDs for free in the hood. Mm. Then I was selling CDs hand in hand. Mm. I did the open mics, I did the, the, the rap battles, the talent shows, all of that, all of that shit. I did all of that shit. So you know what I mean? It just feel good to see that it's finally paying off, that it's clicking, you know. I do this like almost every interview. I hate to do it, but we always gotta do it. We gotta talk about the new lyrical resurgence, right? And so you it starts with Griselda. We're not saying that they, that they invented it. We're saying that they cracked the code, right? Mm -hmm. They did the Fallon thing. They did the shady look, right? So now they, they opened up that door, right? So in terms of all everybody that's out here doing it right now, what do you think it's going to take for MCs like yourself to separate yourself away from the pack? Um, I mean, that's what you got to listen to the music and, you know, see for yourself. You know, I feel like me personally, you know, what sets me apart is you hear me on the hooks and all of that stuff. You know, I, you know, I can harmonize also. That's from the soulful side. That's from my mom mm -hmm. singing in the church choir. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I feel like me personally, I have my little tweaks and all of that that'll set me apart from different artists. But you know, that's up for the people to decide. You know? Right. And we could expect you to be cooking up on a more frequent pace. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just took a little minute off. You know what I'm saying? I had to get some real, real life situations in order, but um. I got an album dropping within the next two, three months, but after that, it's non-stop, you know what I'm saying? I got a whole lot of shit. You know Let me get a name, just like one person who, maybe somebody that's out right now, you ain't haven't got a chance to like feature with them. Who would you want to work with right now? Let's go with, I, 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 I want to work, work with Brock Moss, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I mean? okay, okay. I, I want to, you know, I think that would be a dope chunk, you know what I'm saying? Of course, uh, like wavy. Like his cadence, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll mesh though. And you wavy? That's a tough one for me. Like, it's a tough one for me because I'm kind of working with the guy that I like working with. The guys that I'm working with, to be real with you. So. Right. If the grass ain't one. the grass ain't always but greener. I would like to work with Ghostface. Oh, okay. Okay. I would like to work with Ghost. He's my favorite MC. I had his number, but I lost it. When I find it, <laughs> I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna link y'all. I got a beat for him. Just let him know that. I I got. <laughs> hey. K Burns, somebody you might want to work with, producer or artist. I mean, I kind of, I kind of feel like Wavy in this sense. Yeah. I've been blessed to like work with everybody. They home team with the shit right now. No, nah, not even on the home team shit. Like I just been, I've been blessed to like, like you know, like Kane said, we've been through the ropes. So I've been like really blessed to like work with a lot of people that I want to. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But if I had to pick anybody that I haven't worked with, probably like. Right, right. Gangsta Gibbs, bro. Oh. Yeah, like, hey, like, yeah. I've been listening to Gibbs. So listen to my Ooh. next one right there. And that's going to be everybody. And everybody here would obviously want to do a track with Gangsta Gibbs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was like, it was like that for me. I was like, first time I heard the nigga, my dude, I was like 17. My son told me kind of a show at the pyramid. I heard him there. And I can fuck with him. I mean, you know what you somebody, know what it was. Somebody hit me on Twitter. It was Twitter. this that caught my attention, but. That's what's up. It's gonna be inevitable. So it's like it's inevitable is gonna happen. So you know, it's only time in it and you know persistence, man. Like everybody here has been persistent, you know. 
So as long as we keep that energy up, I mean, like, you're going to see a lot of people flourishing down the, down the road, you know? Like, we flourishing now, my nigga. It's to happen. I keep telling y'all, this shit happen, whether you like it or not. Like, y'all doing it, we doing it. Like, it's happening. See my powers is here. That's what's up. We appreciate you. This shit happen. Happen. We appreciate y'all for real, man. Right. No doubt. No doubt. Right. And it's love. And that's it.